Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Well, I'm joined at this time by Adam Douglas, who's the Senior Consultant in Early Literature at Peter Harrington Bookstore in Kensington. Adam, thanks for joining us. What's the oldest book that you've ever had in your possession at the store? Um, well, the first printed book by, uh, printed from movable type is the Gutenberg Bible, uh, which was done about 1455. Uh, we've had a single leaf only from that. Um, we haven't had the whole thing. <laughs> there hasn't been one on the market for a while. Um, so that, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's as old as you can get. We've had, uh, you know, Shakespeare first folio. We've had, uh, in fact, all the, f all the f four folios. There were four f folio editions. We've had uh, presentation copies of Jane Austen novels. We've had um, first editions of uh, everybody from um, Shakespeare through to J.K. Rowling. Lots. We've we read that it's a lot of... Uh, bookstores have closed in recent years, especially sort of personal bookstores and sole traders. Um, have you felt the sort of financial squeeze uh, over the last, say, five or ten years? I wouldn't say that we as a firm have felt a great squeeze about it. What happened when the, it, when the internet suddenly made a lot of books available to anybody who was looking for them? The books that we used to think were rare turned out to be not so rare on a worldwide level. So there are a lot of books that uh, you know we might see only very rarely at a book fair in London or something that turned up in in, in America or something. This is the uh, second folio edition of Shakespeare's plays. Um, Shakespeare's plays were first published in 1623. This is 1632. Um, unfortunately, we don't get many opportunities to sell the first folio in a bookshop. A uh, complete copy now, I would think, at auction would make something like four million pounds. Adam, tell us about what we've got here, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. The story is about this idea of creating life, which at the time when Mary Shelley wrote it was a really shocking idea. It's hard for us to get back to how shocking that idea was, but it was usurping God's prerogative to create life. And so her story about a, a scientist who reanimates uh, a corpse or a, a collection of corpses all stitched together using electricity was really shocking. And this copy um, is a presentation copy from Mary Shelley to Lord Byron. And this is inscribed in her own hand to Lord Byron from the author. The whole significance of this is that it was his idea that they should have a ghost storytelling competition. Now this is widely considered to be the first true science fiction novel. Why is that? Well, a lot of the things that she predicted have come to pass, really. We're still worried about how far scientists go in creating life, and since then we've managed to achieve some of the things she wrote about. I mean, we've cloned animals, and we've done some of the things that in this day was just science fiction, but has become fact since then. Now, I think there's no more famous spy novelist in the world than Ian Fleming. Can you talk to us about what we've got here? The Ian Fleming novels of James Bond, anyway, uh, the nice thing about them for collectors is it's a limited series. There's 14 um, books published. Um, they're not all novels. Some of them are short story collections. But, um, I mean, the, the first one is, is Casino Royale, which is um, uh, the first book he wrote, published in 1953, um, at that stage he was just a, a newspaper man. You'll see it doesn't have the kind of uh, cover that the later books have. These later Bonds have very familiar dust jackets which are designed by Richard Chopping, but Chopping didn't work on this, on this first book. Um, there's a drawing of Fleming on the back there, that's where he's working in the Admiralty, which he did during the war which is where he got a lot of his uh, insider knowledge on how British spies operated. Um, I recently reread The Man with the Golden Gun, and uh, I was somewhat underwhelmed, but uh, that's the second last book in the series. And um, he was already uh, seriously ill when he was writing that, and I think that the, the quality of them does slightly tail off. And we talked about these Bond books and how their values changed. Do you think that this month being the 50th anniversary of, of the Bond films, do you think that that's affected the price and the value of these books in any way? Well, I think it influenced, uh, it, it created a, a cultural icon that has resonated ever since. Um, each generation has a different James Bond, has a different, you know, um, I'm old enough to remember Sean Connery, um, but, uh, you know, Daniel Craig is this generation's James Bond, and it, it, it keeps on uh, appealing to people. Adam, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.